Hi there again, facilitators for Making Faith Connections, our small group ministry at Cross of Hope. Uh, this is to prepare you for November 14th. Uh, I, I do look the same as I did last week, uh, and that's because it's the same day. Uh, I'm going to Sedona uh, to do some hiking with Laura and some friends of ours, and so I will uh, have worked ahead a bit. And so you, I know you already have the facilitator questions, and so you, 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 know, you can get to this at your leisure to prepare if you'd like, uh, if it's helpful, before the week of November 14th. So we continue in our new worship small group series, uh, Living in Community. Uh, and this week, uh, that Sunday between All Saints and the Reign of Christ, or Christ the King, is uh, Living in Faithful Community. Uh, living in faithful community. We're going to uh, anchor ourselves um, in the gospel reading, but more primarily in the Hebrews text this week. And so um, we, we can find uh, our, our grounding there, as well as the affirmation of baptism, which uh, Draco and Corbin will be uh, participating in, will be, will be making here at the end of the, their com time in com the confirmation ministry. Um, uh, that morning. And so just have that lens there with you as well in terms of the experiential connection with the Sunday and the worship. Um, but let's, uh, as you gather on the 14th or whenever that week that you spend time together, uh, be invited to consider reflecting around these questions. If you knew Jesus would return tomorrow, how would you respond? And this is from the Gospel text, uh, which we're going to spend some time in, and we're going to connect that to the Hebrews. But uh, um, we're going to start there with just this fun, philosophical, maybe uh, theological pondering over the uh, of, of Jesus' promise to come again. And so maybe I should just spend a few minutes talking about that, because, uh, you know, that is kind of the big, well... Um, uh, it can be a, a, a brain buster, right, for us. And so the idea of, the, of Jesus' second coming, of Jesus coming again, of the end yet uh, that is yet to come, I think, as Jesus says in the Gospel of Mark, um, is very much there, even though for 2,000 plus years um, it hasn't occurred. A lot of our New Testament uh, writing contextually is out of, um, is out of uh, the context of, Jesus coming like tomorrow and so there was some there was some um, there, there, there was some uh, 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 urgentness I guess to their living which maybe we don't share as much um, 2,000 plus years later um, but yet the promise is, still seems to be revealed there in scripture that Jesus will come again our creed confesses it as well and so um, it's, it, it's a good exercise, uh, I think healthy and faithful for us to consider if, if, if you knew Jesus would return tomorrow, all right, if, if Jesus showed up and said, here I am just as I said I would, um, the world as we know it is, is, is done and we're going to live eternally um, now with all the saints, a little connection to last week, how would you respond? Uh, what, is it, what is there to learn from considering this question for, for us today, for today? Um, you know, what, what is there for us to learn from pondering that? Um, and describe where you find a strong sense of God's presence. Um, we're going to be talking about the faithful community, living in faithful community, uh, as a strong place of understanding God's presence. And so before we get there, it might be, again, again a good time just to check in and see where, our, where are people coming from with an understanding of uh, finding a strong presence of God. I invite you into prayer here as we prepare for our leadership. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Then I'll invite us into a time of reflection, and we're going to start with the Gospel of Mark. Um, because again, I think our, our reflecting on the, the end times, which the next three Gospels or so, weeks of Gospels, will, um, will find us there, both in, in, in Mark here at the end of year B, and then in Luke once we get to the beginning of year C uh, in like two weeks' time. And so uh, uh, it's good to start, I think, in contemplation there, 
as a frame of reference for the Hebrews text and for our living and faithful community. So let's start there. Um, again, you can spend as much time or as little time you do you as a faithful leader in the context of your small group. But this is to be in conversation with you and, and hopefully a tool along that way. So as Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will left, be left there upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then I start with a quote both uh, early in the sermon, but also here inviting your consideration in our small group time. Uh, that is attributed to Martin Luther, although it's pretty, scholars have pretty much debunked that he didn't actually say this. Um, I think the 1940s um, in Nazi occupation was the first time that, that this was there, uh, this quote was attributed to the, the church. And it says, even if I knew that tomorrow the world would go to pieces, or sometimes you hear it, the world would end, I'd still plant my apple tree today. And again, it's been attributed to Martin Luther uh, throughout time, but most likely he didn't actually say it, but that I don't think is, it doesn't really matter. Um, how does this quote communicate hope and faith? I mean, I think that's the, 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 the juxtaposition of it is to offer hope uh, and, and, and to encourage perseverance, steadfastness, and faith, which um, the Hebrews text, I would argue, does the same. But how, how does this uh, do communicate hope and faith? Why do you think Jesus responded to the disciples as he does in this story? So, you know, again, the disciples naturally ask questions. How? When? Right? Those, those human nature questions. And Jesus uh, just kind of sidesteps it and says, you know, it's, again, not for you to know. Um, and so uh, why do you think Jesus responded to the disciples as he does in this story? Uh, good just to kind of ponder that together a bit. And then, then the question, because from there, the question is, does it matter? Does it matter if the end is near? Does it matter if the end is near? Uh, and how does Jesus coming again and the last day, oftentimes you hear about, the, you know, in Hebrews, it's, it's the day approaching, uh, the last day. End times, nah, I usually stay away from that because it's like this whole time of, you know, trial and this, that, and the other. But... How does Jesus coming again, which is very much revealed, and we believe uh, and, and we state that belief in the creed, um, how does Jesus coming again in the last day inform or impact your faith? Does it? I mean, just, again, these are, I think, really um, hearty questions for discussion in your small groups. And then, uh, with that kind of, um, those juices flowing, be invited to back to uh, Hebrews. Um, Hebrews is the New Testament text for that Sunday. Um, and uh, I am just going to, uh, again, m m the sermon and the reflection will be the, the latter verses of, of, of this longer thing. You can feel free to read all of it. Um, uh, I'm going to focus in just on, on, on verse 19 and, and the end. So I'm going to just start there for us today here. So this is verse 19. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, I'm going to say just because of Jesus Christ, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, 
as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. And again, there it ends with that idea of the day, capital D in Scripture there, the, the, the day of Jesus coming again, the end of all earthly time as we know it exists, as we see the day approaching. Now, again, um, you know, so many doomsday pro prognosticators have come and gone along with their predictions, and here we are. So what, 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 how do we know that that is to come? Throughout the arc of history, of known history, you could you could read into world events of oh those are the signs and, and and it has not come to be and so again from the lens of does it even matter if the day is approaching and we live like the day is now or tomorrow um, I think that that's um, uh, 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 that's kind of I think the the invitation into faithful community so um, explore how this text this Hebrew text encourages the community to persevere in faith continue to persevere in faith, knowing or not uh, exactly when, but knowing that God said it will be. Uh, how does this text encourage the community to persevere in faith? And how have you been taught? And or how do you now come before God? All right, it's talking about we come before in the Hebrew text, is we come to the sanctuary in, in, in sure confidence of faith, right? And so this idea of coming before God's presence. So, so for you, uh, coming to the, the font at baptism, coming to the table each week or as often as we can in communion, uh, that strong presence of God that we talked about in, in the gathering and check-in, how, uh, how do you come before God? Uh, do you do? You, must you do a a, a, a time of confession? Um, must you, you must you be steeped in prayer and humility? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's it's, it's it'd be it'd be really. Um, I'm looking forward to um, sharing some of this reflection with others. Uh, how you approach God, um, and 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 then is that the same? Is it different? How has it changed over the arc of time? How are you taught? Um, so I think some really neat and fruitful conversation from that. Uh, why is the truth that God, who has promised, uh, is faithful, good news? Why is the truth that God, who has promised, and that's the text uh, from right from Hebrews there, why is the truth that God, who has promised, is, is faithful, good news? Why is that good news? Why is it good news that God, who is, who is faithful, uh, or who has promised, is faithful? God is faithful. Why is that good news? reworded my own stupidly complicated question huh why is it good news that god is faithful and then how does this good news help us live in community how does this good news help us live in community um as you enjoy some reflection there describe what it looks like and feels like to live in faithful community um, we'll, in our reflection, use the, uh, the intentions and the affirmation of baptism to live among God's faithful people, to serve God and one another, um, to proclaim Christ uh, uh, in our words and in our deeds, to share, hear the word of God, share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. We'll use those five parts in the sermon. You'll have that. It's in the digital as well. Um, if you need to, to review and write them down, um, if, if you don't have them, they're in the hymnal. Um, but we'll use that a little bit to, to, to talk about what does it look like to live in faithful community. But it would be good for us to describe a bit together uh, what does it look like, what does it feel like to live in faithful community. Uh, and then living in faithful community, it's a statement about God. It's a statement about God's presence. It's a statement about God's faithfulness and God's call to us in our life. Um, uh, and so I, I do believe living in faithful community, it's a statement in itself about God. And so I invite you to, to consider how that is. How, how, how is it a statement of God? Um, uh, and uh, for me, I think it, it again, it's, it's God calls us to this faithful community to encounter God's strong presence. And I counter God's strong presence as much as I do in the beauty of Sedona, I'm assuming, because I'm going there uh, this Monday, uh, which would have been last Monday by the time you watch that. Or watch this, rather. Um, 
And so, you know, you, you see and you feel and you know God's, God's presence, but there's something about the gathered assembly of faithful, um, baptized believers, all there in God's name to praise God. Um, whether they, they want to or not, for whatever reason, God has brought them there in the Spirit, is a strong, strong symbol of the presence of God for me. How do the things that we do in faithful community proclaim, invite, and sustain people on the way of Jesus? Um, the, the faithful community, the church, the body of Christ, the Christ community, however, whatever words you use to describe um, that faithful community, how do the things that we do in prayer and proclamation, in, in, uh, in support and, and love of uh, our neighbor, how does that how does the doing of that, the living of that faithful community, proclaim, invite, and sustain others, people, in and out of the community, on the way of Jesus? Then if you still have time, if you have interest, if you want to, check out Daniel, which is the Old Testament text for the day, 12, 1 to 3, and then uh, you can explore the connections of that to the other texts. It's, I believe it's um, St. Michael and All Angels, um, so it's kind of more end-timey stuff. So uh, you can do it if you'd like and reflect a little bit and connect it and uh, make meaning of that in the context of our day as we continue to share uh, this journey living in faithful community. God bless you.